world coming out of high school, but it's not really the case when you go to a, a elite place like this. But you always want to make that immediate impact as a young guy. But you know, it takes a little speed bumps and recovery and all this because the injuries come too. Uh, you got to be able, your coaches got to be able to trust you too because you know they're putting their family out on the line for you and go out there and make plays and everything so you can't have no mistakes. So, you know, growing pains do come, but you got to grow as a young guy too. What you're doing now, is this is this what you envisioned all along or is there still still more? I think there's still more uh, what I envision. I'm on the right path, I think. Uh, I keep on going and take the next step and just keep on getting better each week and challenging myself. What, what would that entail? What, what What is the next step? Even more bigger plays, uh, especially in bigger games. You know, uh, this college uh, football playoffs coming up and uh, Big Ten championships coming up. So make big, keep on making big plays in those games and just having those moments of keeping everybody on the edge of their seats. Vaughn, is everything you do in a game orchestrated, or how much freedom do you have, for one of another word, to go to the ball? I mean. If you follow my drift there. I think I have a lot of freedom. Yeah. Uh, Coach Ash and Coach Fick put me in a position to make plays for them, especially for this team. They just told me to go out there and do what I do and just make plays for the team and just bring that spark and passion, what I show through this game, and just keep on going each time and just bring uh, the other teammates along with me because when they see me out there having fun, they're going to have fun as well. well. Does that bring great responsibility? Do you feel a big responsibility when you're out there also, given that sort of freedom? It does. It brings a lot of responsibility because it's no, it's no area it takes. Because uh, those young guys looking at me and see how I handle myself and how I carry myself on and off the field, so it's just a big responsibility. And I take I own to that. So. Uh, you're one of the leading scorers on the team now. I think I asked you this Saturday night and stuff. <laughs> what, what does it just do for you from a confidence, from a, I don't know, a feel good standpoint to have a couple of touchdowns under your belt? I think it boosts me a little bit more, uh, especially confidence wise, because I know I can do it all alone. Uh, it's just bringing me back to my high school days. I'm like, I can touch the pain a little bit more, but it, it's very enjoying. Uh, it's very an honor. Uh, God gave me that blessing. It's truly an opportunity for me. Uh, I'm just so glad to be a part of that. So just being out there making those plays for Buckeye Nation, this team, is just an honor. Do you, kind of oh. you just kind of salivate when you see the ball in the air coming your way? Oh, I do. I said it's mine and it's taken. <laughs> Illinois has got a couple of 100-yard rushers this past week against Purdue. Do you feel? That's going to be a challenge for you guys. You've done really well here in recent weeks against the run, but mm -hmm. just uh, maybe take that up a notch this week against them. I think so. Uh, it's going to be another challenge for us. Um, they can throw the ball a little bit and run the ball, so they're pretty balanced right now. Uh, their offense putting up uh, major yards in the Big Ten, so we got a challenge. We'll keep on getting better each week. We'll hold each other accountable. Everybody will do their job, mm -hmm. and we'll keep on getting better through our practice. Well, when you talk about touching the paint, did you have – I assume that you wanted to get at least one this year. Did you have did, did you have a goal for more than that? Yeah, I had a goal for more than that. I think I have another one left in me. So <laughs> <laughs> we're going to see what happens. And you don't ever know which game is going to become because all these big games coming up. Just get ready to go. You only have one left, or you, you just, look, you just have, have the next one? I might have two, I think. So <laughs> we're going to see what happens. I'm an even guy. <laughs> sorry. You're one of the spiritual leaders of the teams. It seems like uh, JT kind of the same way. What's it mean? He's back. He's ready to go this week. And, and what? How the guys wel quote welcomed him back and everything. What's the, the thought? I guess going back with him. It's never been a welcome back. You know. Uh, you know. Everybody makes mistakes. He's human. Uh, he was never left. You know. He was in the locker room with us, uh, still going, uh, mm -hmm. cheering us on. And we know we got him in our hearts. And uh, and uh, he's up in the press box with the guys. And but he's not missed at all because you know he's one of those leaders that you can't miss because uh, he speaks with volume as much as he's played too. So that speaks with volume too. So it's very, it's, it's a big part of uh, him coming back this week. I'm very proud to get him back. So we're going to see what he has in store for us. What makes him a good leader? What makes him a good speaker to you fellas? Even when he wasn't starting, he was still talking to the offense and maybe even to the whole team and stuff. But what is it that he brings when, he, when he's talking here, Vaughn, that makes people pay attention? The way he brings, he speaks from his heart. Uh, he speaks what's on his mind. He speaks the real. Uh, what needs to be said, he says it. Um, he says with authority because uh, he really catches everybody's eye and everybody respect him. Uh, and that's a real big part, and especially being a quarterback, and it's another big part because you got to back up what you say too because mm -hmm. you got to play a role out there and just lead the team and carry the team and uh, put production out there, and he does that well too. So it's just uh, it's a really big part when your leader is uh, really speaks what's on his mind. Because uh, you're just not hearing it from the coaches, you're hearing it from a guy that's really like out there that's getting a lot of pull up right now. Because uh, um, he's a real guy, and uh, that's what we like to keep it as. And everybody just keep it real with each other. So it's honesty. 
But, see, yeah. but it sounds like you've even learned some stuff from, from being around him. Is that accurate? I mean, uh, as a leader, I mean, you, you seem to speak your mind also when we talk to you. Right. Uh, we, that's what we always do. Uh, always keep the honest with each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what we learn the best because we learn something new from each other every day. Like, I learn something new from the young guys, to the older guys, and from the coaching staff. So I'm always eager to learn. Do you get a chance uh, – you not only gripped it, but then you ripped it. I mean, the, the other night and stuff on the air. Do you practice post interception, post scoop and score moves? I mean, do you do you have a chance during the week to do those kind of things? Do you do it in your apartment? What? How, how do you? Because you know you got to make a move right as soon as you get it. Right, right, yeah. right. I mean, uh, no, it's just, uh, how do you prep further? Is that just natural? I think it's natural, but. Yeah. You know, I get interceptions at practice. I still work on my moves then, and I, I run all the way down to the end zone. And Coach Mike get mad at me until I come back. But yeah. it's just all natural, but it's just this is a playmaker just being a playmaker. But uh, put me in your head, though. You seem to have a sense of, after that uh, pick the other night, of exactly where to go, <laughs> where there might be an opening. You, you know, that wasn't just running to daylight. Well, I mean, what was – you know what I mean? Nat- I mean, what was it uh, – did you did you see things even as you're catching the ball, you know, about what you're gonna do next? Yeah, I envision things like uh, I envision like picking the ball off, uh, scoop and score, a big fumble. Uh, yeah. Anything I envision that before the game. Uh, me and God, I pray about it. Me and God talk about it, and He said, "You'll get one." Yeah. So oh, really, <laughs> and uh, He gave me one. So uh, it's just a natural act, a knack for the ball, and just uh, being where you need to be at the right time, and just making that play for those guys, and just. It just all comes naturally. I'm just blessed to have those natural abilities. Juan, when you have what you're trying to do as a player each day, how much of your responsibility is it to also help the young guys get ready for the day when you older guys are gone? Is that something that's in your mind? Yeah, it is. Uh, I told those guys, you're a shoestring away from being in the game. you got to prepare like it. If I break my shoestring, you got to go in the game. So I always challenge those guys like Malik and Eric Love that's behind me and Tavis right now. Uh, challenging those guys to get better because my leagues get growing every day. I'm proud to see that because you see him down on kickoff making tackles. And he's been a special team player of the week and all this. So he's growing, he's learning. He's really grasping what the coaches are saying to him. And he's learning. And he want to make plays too. And when you, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to go back to previous questions. Do you lobby to, to play offense too? Oh, yeah. I tell Coach, uh, Coach Smith all the time. Yeah. Get me in there. <laughs> I'll run the route for you. There's so many receiver injuries, right? Right. They could use you. I think they could. But we'll keep that fun and get us. <laughs> so are you a little bit, I don't know, jealous is not maybe not the right word, envious of Jabril, Jabril Peppers and what they're doing with him? No, I'm not. Uh, my time's coming. Um, <laughs> that's why I say I'm not worried about it. My time's coming. Just be patient and stay humble. When you're having the kind of year that you're having, have you, has it been in your head at all that this might be my last year here? Uh, no. Uh, me and Coach Ash said we're going to talk about that at the end. I'm not worried about that. It's all about family with me, right? I mean, it's all about family, uh, family and team with me right now. Um, just getting these guys ready each week. And um, just not even worrying about that right now because it's selfish right now. Uh, it's worried about the team right now. Do you feel like you've made a step, though, that you are better than you were last year? Yeah, I do. I feel like I made a step, and you see it. Uh, you see the confidence, you see the plays are being made, you see the production. So I think uh, the eye in the sky don't lie. Where, 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 where do you go from? Where do you go from like playing your responsibility in that progression? When did you notice the click that you felt confident enough to go <laughs> make plays as opposed to just take care of what you're supposed to be doing? You know, from one play to the next. Vaughn, do you remember when that clicked for you? Was it middle of last year? Was it late in the season when you had the picks? I mean, what? I think it's been happening uh, before yeah. I came here. Yeah. Well, I bet, but I mean, you know, in, in this system, you know, you, oh, okay. I would think you've got to prove to the coaches you can do what they was, want you to do before you do what you do, you know? I think it was my, really my first year. It's really like going against Philly Brown and all them. I was like, I'm going to just jump everything. Yeah. I just see the plays and I'm, I'm reading the pattern matching, I'm reading the routes and the route concepts and, and just make the plays. And all this film study that helps me with Coach Ash and Todd because we do it every Monday. I'm going to go after this and just really just studying the game. It just reappears in the game, so it makes it so much easier and faster for me yeah. to, to take that next step and just make that play. Hey, I wonder quickly, I know you probably already watched a little video in Illinois, I would think. Uh, the Ferguson kid who came back last week, their running back and yeah. stuff, what just stands out about the way he plays? Because they even talk about it after the game, the spark he brings. They'd lost you know, three and all of a sudden they go for 300 mm-hmm. rushing against uh, Purdue. Well, what just stands out about his running style, his, what he brings in there, I guess? Uh, he's a spark to that team, like you said. Uh, 
He brings passion. He wants to win. He wants to be that playmaker, so they'll get the ball in his hands a lot. Uh, see what he can do out in space and between the tackles. So that's their playmaker right now. And they got a couple of receivers that could go down there and get it too. So uh, we're going to do our homework. We're going to uh, keep on preparing for this. And we're going to uh, get better week at practice and just keep preparing and just go see on Saturday. What's that's your memory of that stadium over there? A little windy. Yeah. That's why I remember. It's little, <laughs> but how does that just affect as you go into a game? Because weird stuff has happened over there with Ohio State. And a lot of it is due to the wind, the wind tunnel effect, whatever you want to call it. I, do, do you look forward to it, or do you, you know what I mean, or, or do you know it may be another wacky game, you know? I look forward to it. One place we made. Yeah. That's what I think.